I go back on the pill. Considering just taking off and leaving all my troubles behind me. Okay, you're upset and things have been hectic around here, but you gotta give them time to work themselves out. Dee Dee, why should I? Why should I stay here and watch the best years of my life pass by in frustration and confusion? I mean, what kind of life plan is that? Well, put like that, it doesn't sound so hot. Maybe I should just go away and get away from Cliff for a while. Dee Dee, did he send you here to apologize? I mean, why didn't he come here himself? Because you wouldn't see him. Now, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Dee Dee, I was back there all day and I saw him sitting out here. Now, there is a door that is separating this room from the kitchen. Now, why couldn't he have just gotten on his white stallion and rode into the kitchen, thrown me over the saddle, and, and galloped off with me into the sunset? Now, why couldn't he have done that? Missy, I don't know how to answer you that. Well, I do. It's because he didn't love me enough. It wasn't just that door that was separating us. It was lack of love. Oh, so what about Cliff Nelson? I mean, he can take care of himself. Probably wouldn't even notice if I was gone anyways. You know, that's not fair. Yeah, well, maybe you're right, but right now it is exactly how I'm feeling. You know, Dee Dee, I want to thank you. Why? Because talking to you has been a real big help. It has? Yeah. Because for the first time in a long, long time, I have seen things very clearly now. And the more I think about taking off, the better I like it. Thanks, Dee Dee. You're welcome. Oh, Dee Dee, hi. Yeah. Thanks. Bill, well, how are you? Oh, not too good. Oh, this isn't my day. What? Nothing. Oh, what's wrong? That man. He was bothering me outside of Preacher's apartment. He followed you here? He must have. Uh, Jody, where are you going? Jody, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? Hey there, Jody. Why did you follow me? I'm just here having a drink. You followed me from Preacher's apartment, and I want to know why. I'm not doing anything wrong here. It's a public place. I'm a member of the First public. First you scare me, then you try to hurt me. Oh, now you got it all wrong, little lady. I didn't try anything. When I do, then you'll know. Oh, no, buddy. You got it wrong because you cannot threaten me. I won't let you hey, threaten take me. Take it easy. We don't want any scenes here, huh? Are you trying to bother her? She came up to me. He followed me here. I don't want you following me anymore, and I don't want you talking to me anymore. Is that understood? She's crazy. You're crazy. Uh, <laughs> she's one of the sanest people I know. Oh, yeah? uh, Cliff, come over here, quick. Look, I, I got no quarrel with anyone here. Hey, is there anything wrong here? This turkey's been following Jody. Oh, yeah? Then... <gasps> You're all crazy. Creep! Sit right down, Jody. We took care of business. Yes, we did. To the three musketeers. Yes. All for one? And one for all. Mm. Well, I've got to get going. I'm going home early for a change. You want me to come with you? Oh, no, Cliff. I think that guy, whoever he is, is probably gone by now. Thanks. Well, if you're ever in need of my sword again, milady, you have but to ask. Oh, Cliff. <laughs> Good night. Bye. You think she'll be all right? You two have to talk. She's very upset. Okay. I'll go get her.
She won't talk to me? Cliff, she's not there. What do you mean? Where is she? Francesco said she just walked right out the back door. She didn't tell anybody where she was going. She didn't say a word. All right, come on, listen up. This morning, we are going to close down one of the biggest fencing operations this city's ever seen. Now, this is Jake Vanepper's warehouse. You'll notice there's an entrance here. There's one here at our back. Vanepper's office is right here in the middle. Now, some of you don't know the uh, new kid on the block here. That's Detective Chris Egan. Then some of you have already been tossed around the gym by her. I understand it's one of her favorite pastimes. Just working out, nothing personal. Yeah, well, remember all those bruises are nothing personal, Chris. Okay. Manepra's profile indicates that he keeps one bodyguard with him at all times. Both men should be considered armed and dangerous. Yeah, but we don't want any shooting unless it's absolutely necessary. Now, I don't mean that we're going to go in there with a smile and a prayer. Just want to make sure all you guys are always on your toes. Vanefra's had his way around here for a long, long time, and he's not about to go down easy. Detective Stoner and I will each lead squads. His team will hit the front at 0900. My team come in through the rear at the same moment. Now, I hope you've had time to study this diagram. It could save your lives. Okay, any questions? No. 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 All right. Egan, you got the warrants? Signed, sealed, and ready to be delivered. Nervous? A little. New faces, new places, a lot of unknowns. Yeah, same old routine. Now, don't worry, you'll do just fine. Trust me? All the way. Thanks. Okay, shall we get the show on the road? Yeah, I didn't have any other plans for this morning. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's mobilize. <sighs> Hi there, Gavin. Oh, I get it. You wandered in here by mistake. We don't show adult films. Hmm? What, did Whitney send you down here? It's not his theater anymore. Or has he forgotten that Spencer Varney finally found a buyer right before he was killed? Oh, no. Mr. Whitney didn't send me down here. I came to talk to you. So talk. All uh, right, what are you doing there? What does it look like? I'm packing. Uh, uh, somebody told me you were going to New York. I changed my mind. But since nobody knows who Varney sold the theater to, and whoever bought it hasn't bothered to contact me, I can't wait around here forever. I have to find a job. Are you doing what? I don't believe we're having this conversation. Doing what? What does it matter to you what my next job is? What no, does no, it matter no. to you at all? I don't know why you picked a day to come grubbing around here. No, wait, Maybe it's what? because it's a low point in my life and you just want to gloat or something. Why? What are you doing? Selling magazine subscriptions? I'm not interested. About your job. What about my job? That's why I'm here. What? There. This is a deed. Mm hmm And a bill of sale. Mm hmm This is your name on here. Mm hmm You bought the Whitney Theater? Yep. As an investment. I have to sit down. You bought this theater as an investment? Well, listen, I'm not getting any younger, you know. Um, guy's got to put away something for the future. Maybe, but most people don't put away theaters. Yeah, well, that's all that was left when... Uh, uh, when what? Um, uh, when I decided that I wanted to make an investment. This is all legal, isn't it? Hey, listen, you know, you have been saying some very unkind things to me. So I said to myself, well, okay, the guy's out of a job. He's got a right to feel a little upset. But I bought this theater on the up and up, up. And I paid cash for it, you can see, right there. What is this? $100,000. It's worth more than that. Well, I couldn't find any buyers, so I made a good deal, okay? Now, look, I know that uh, you wanted to buy this theater for yourself, only you couldn't afford it. Is that right? Yeah. I got a proposition for you. Strictly business. Now, all the stuff that went on between you and me in the past, we just put that aside. You have a proposition for me. That's right. Okay, why not? Let's hear it. You uh, reimburse me half the sale price, and we become equal partners. In the theater? 
Why are you out in the theater? I mean, what are you? You look like I'm uh, suggesting that we go into bank robbery or something like that. Frankly, that wouldn't have surprised me half as much. But why me, Gunther? What do I know about running a the theater? Nothing. So if theater don't run, I don't make any money on my investment, right? Right. Well, who else is there? I mean, who else knows this place better than you? I have to admit that that seems logical. Well, what is it? You want to be equal partners? Hey, you want to own this theater or not? You're watching USA, America's All Entertainment Network. By the way, did I uh, thank you for not telling me my new partner was a woman and causing me to look like a complete fool when I met her? No, but you can thank me now. <laughs> thank you. I think I can tell from the way the raid on Vinetra's warehouse went yesterday that you and Chris are already working well together. Yeah, yeah, we're working pretty well together. But you know what's strange? A few minutes ago, I asked her to join Dee Dee and Cliff and me for lunch. I mean, she acted like I offered her a snake to eat and stormed out. I mean, it was real strange. And another thing, I mean, okay, I know she came from NYPD, really highly recommended and all that, but when I asked her why she left New York for Monticello, she really overreacted. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting. Hmm. <laughs> Mallory. Who's Del Everett? Um, Everett, we found a guy in the warehouse yesterday. He said he worked for the rental agency that leased, leased it to Vinefra. I see. What was the name of that company? You sure? All right, Sweeney. I'll have Stoney get back to you. Calvin, I'm afraid that bust of yours wasn't as good as I thought. You let one fish swim right through your net. Everett? Yeah, proper idea. Had a perfectly plausible story. What gives? You asked Sweeney to check out Everett's company, the uh, Rafflemeyer Realty Management Company? Oh, yeah, we wanted to get some details on the rental agreement. What's up? Everett sold you a bill of goods, detective. You mean he doesn't work for that company? I mean, there is no company by that name. Benefra owns that warehouse outright. The driver's license number was a phony. Whoever that was that you let talk his way out of that place yesterday, his real name is not Del Everett. Damn! You know, now, this is exactly what I need to go along with all the rest of my worries. Life has not been good to me. I don't see any chance of it getting better, so this is goodbye. It's, it's a suicide note, isn't it? Why did she take a suitcase? Maybe she had a rope in it. She doesn't own a rope. Maybe she bought one. Cliff, would you just settle down? Now, Dee Dee's talked to Missy the most lately. I mean, look, the note could mean anything. Maybe she's just gone away for a while. Life has uh, not been good to me, and I don't see any chance of it getting better. Where do you go when you write a note like that? Off the Monticello Bridge. You know how Mitzi is. She always over-dramatizes everything. Yes, I know how Mitzi is, and, and she has never just disappeared from here and vanished in a thin air. Didi, there's a phone call for you. Urgent. Thank you, Mary. Hello? Didi? Mitzi, where are you? It doesn't matter. It sure does. Calvin and Clipper are both here right now. We're all worried sick about you. It's that note I left, isn't it? That's a big part of it. Yeah, I realized after I wrote it that you probably were going to take it the wrong way. Dee Dee, I'm not going to do anything stupid. I don't want you to worry. I... Dee Dee, I'm just going away. I am away. I'm going farther away. Uh, Missy, look, let's talk about this. Where were you last night? At a hotel in Olmstead. Well, are you still there? No, Dee Dee, listen to me. I didn't want to leave without telling you not to worry. I'm okay. But this is goodbye. Listen to me. I want to put Cliff on. No! Mitzi, please. He's climbing the walls. Mitzi, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I proposed to you. But thanks a lot, Cliff. Well, no, that's not what I mean. Oh, Mitzi, I miss you. Please, don't. 
don't, don't, don't leave like this. Let's talk. Let's work this out. Cliff, I've already made arrangements with Marianne to take care of the rock garden. Missy, you're not listening. Cliff, you're not listening to me. Remember when I asked you to propose to me so I wouldn't be lying to Gunther Wagner when I told him I could marry him because I was already engaged? Of course I do. You gave me your ring, but it wasn't my ring. And how I said I wasn't ready for marriage. And the rock garden was my life. Yes. Cliff, a restaurant shouldn't be a life. It should be a place to eat. I agree. I'm leaving. Oh, Missy, Missy, I love you. Restaurants are just places to eat. Oh, please, please, be my wife. After I called, I wasn't uh, sure you went. Why? Well, uh, you really gave it to me yesterday. Maybe you deserved it. Uh, maybe I did. Anyway, I've, I've been giving a lot of thought about what you said about me always playing it alone. Mm -hmm. And I slipped into this groove a long time ago, baby, and it, it's real hard to climb out, you know? Well, let me help you. Yeah? I mean, yeah, I, I could use some help. Uh, you know, this, this is, you know, this, this is all new to me, you know? It's not easy. No, I know. Nothing important ever is. So you, you asked about my old man, remember? Oh, uh, yeah. Right, you got a letter from, from your father, and he sounds like he's in trouble and he needs your help. Hey, my old man was always in trouble. I mean, when he walked into a room, trouble followed him and pulled up a chair. You know, when he was off to who knows where, it was real easy to think about the good times. But that letter, man, it brought back a lot of, a lot of the bad times, you know? I mean, there, there were a lot of them. Gather, where have you been? There are a hundred arrangements that have to be made. Oh, and look here, you've got to go pick up the cake and the champagne for the wedding tomorrow. Yes, I'm very sorry, Mr. Whitney, but I had some uh, business to take care of. What was so important that you had to take care of it today? Uh, investments, uh, you know. Investments? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Oh, well, uh, you know, I've carefully been saving over the years, and, of course, your salary is very generous. Oh, of course. Of course. Especially with that uh, raise that I don't remember authorizing Spencer to give you. Uh, yes, sir, especially after that. You are kidding, aren't you? <laughs> no, sir. Gunther, you spend every dime of every paycheck that I've ever given you on fast women and slow horses. Are you telling me that you managed to save enough to make investment? What form are these investments in? Well, it's a kind of private right now, Mr. Whitney. Oh. Hi, guys. Hi, baby. Hi. Uh, hey, Mrs. Uh, 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 um, oh, well, I would have gotten the door for you, but I didn't hear the bell ring. Oh, well, that's because it didn't. I already feel like I'm home. Oh, yeah, I forgot that uh, you lived here before. Huh? Yeah, it's kind of like slipping into a pair of shoes after they're already broken in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh. Yeah? I need your advice. Mm -hmm. I'm the best man. I haven't asked anybody yet. All right, well, I'll give it to you in the car. Uh, are, are we going someplace? Yep. We're going to go buy a wedding band to match this wonderful ring you gave me. Oh, well, how could I have forgotten that? You know? Mm -hmm. If the marriage goes half as well as this courtship, then I just might stay married forever. Yeah. Be careful. I'm gonna hold you to that. Angie, I think it's a simply splendid idea. Writing a book might be the very thing you need to lift you out of your doldrums. Well, that's what I thought, but uh, Mike doesn't seem to share that enthusiasm. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. I would have thought he would have Falling in with any plan that would make you happy. Well, it might be the subject matter that bothers him. Oh, men are so narrow-minded. What is it? I thought I'd do David Cameron's story from beginning to end, the truth and nothing but. I beg your pardon? Well, it has everything. Romance, intrigue. It certainly does have everything. It has us. My dear. You would rattle so many skeletons in Monticello closets. It would sound like a hailstorm. Uh, well, I could fictionalize it somehow. It's Nonsense. I want you to put this out of your mind immediately. I, for one, am not going to let my part in that shameful affair become the topic for idle bedside conversation. And I can assure you, 
that everyone else who was unfortunate enough to become involved with David Cameron will feel exactly as I do. Huh. And that's that. I can't very well write a book if nobody in it is going to help me. Help you? My dear, they'd stone you to death. And I myself might throw the first rock. Sci-Fi Movie. His bees killed my wife and attacked your daughter. A madman frees a swarm of killer stingers. The man's a homicidal maniac. The deadly bees. And on Saturday... Oh, hello! Well, Gavin, you look like a man with good news, and if that's true, please share it with us. We certainly could use them. Well, I do have some good news. The Whitney Theater is going to reopen. Oh. <laughs> Gavin, that's terrific. No, wait, 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 there's more. I am going to be co-owner. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you hear that? Gavin's going to own the Whitney Theater. Very happy for you, Gavin. Hey, well, come on, come on. Um, how'd all this happen? Well, um, see, I was in the theater office, and an angel named Gunther Wagner comes in with a deed to the theater in his pocket. Gunther, Gunther Wagner. Wagner. Wait a minute. Gunther Wagner bought the Whitney Theater? I'm very happy for you, Gavin. Uh, thanks. But... <laughs> it's too good to be true. It sure is. Now, where would Gunther Wagner get the kind of money it would take to buy a theater? This is Mallory. Listen, I'd like E.J. Pond. He's our witness against Vinefra. I'd like him brought to my office before he's released on bail. That'll be fine. Yes. Yes, Skylar Whitney, ask him to come in, please. Sky, how you doing? Fine, thanks, sir. How are you? Good, good. Listen, congratulations on your upcoming marriage. I'm glad to see that you and Raven are finally going to get together. Yeah, well, there were certain times when I didn't think it was going to happen, but some people got together and made it possible, and you were one of them. Well, it's very kind of you to say so, but uh, I was being led around on a leash by Cameron just as much as anybody was. Well, I'd like to thank you. Sure. Uh, and the reason I stopped by today was because I've got a favor to ask of you. Anything I can do? I know that this is short notice, but um, I was wondering if you'd stand up with me tomorrow at the wedding. Uh, I don't know what to say. Well, it, it would mean a lot to me and to Raven. Raven knows that you were going to ask me? Of course. And she heartily agrees. I'm touched. So, will you be my best man? <laughs> I'd love to. Here. Here's the ring. This guy is beautiful. You guard it with my life. I gave her Jefferson Brown's ring for her engagement. Do you remember that thing? Yeah, very well. And then about an hour ago, we went out and bought that. Huh. Something old and something new, huh? My old man was a spony evangelist, right? And he went around conning small town women out of their housekeeping money. Right, I remember you telling me about those days. So now, is, is that how you got your nickname? Yeah, only when I got old enough. I was preaching hell to the husbands while my old man was uh, introducing uh, paradise to the wives, you know? Oh. Well, you were probably too young to no, realize that. No, no. I was old enough, so don't go looking for excuses, just listen. Okay. See, after that, Dell dri drifted from town to town, you know, doing con to con. And he was raising me to be a flim-flam man like he was. Mm -hmm. So while you were learning your three R's, I was uh, doing card tricks. In the wrong game, you can get shot. And I was uh, taking people's wallets out of any pocket I wanted to. Come on. You don't believe me? No. Come here. That was just a way to steal a kiss. How can you say such a because thing, huh? I don't have a wallet on me. I don't even have any pockets on me. Right. Oh. Listen, uh, what time is it? What? What time is it? Some education my old man gave me, right? It's time to go. Where? To pick out your tuxedo. 
Would you wig out on me or something? What tuxedo? Well, the one that you're going to wear when you escort me to the Whitney wedding. Are you sure you want me there after what I just told you? And you didn't even hear the whole story That's yet. okay, I will. And yes, I'm sure I want you there. So come on. But what, what, what? Do, do, do I, do I got to really wear a tuxedo? Yes, you got to really wear a tuxedo. I, I really am very happy for you, Gavin. You've finally gotten what you wanted. Well, and I've lost what I wanted. Even though I never knew that I really wanted it. Mitzi will be back, Cliff. No, she won't. I think she's gone for good. I do understand. Nobody can understand. Cliff, listen to me. The theater isn't everything. It isn't any more my whole life than this restaurant is Mitzi's. No? No. I still love Jody. And even though she's here, she's just as lost to me as Mitzi is to you. David Cameron, what do I do? I, I, I want to write something other than the news. A film, a book, something. What gave you the idea in the first place? Oh, a book I was reading. I know I can do better. What book was that? Oh, here it is, this one. Love's Dark Fury. Oh, all right, I know what you're thinking. Now, what is she reading this romantic drivel for? Why not some latest expose in Washington or an analysis of the Middle Eastern situation. I'm tired of living my job 24 hours a day. And romances relax me, that's all. My dear, you shouldn't try to guess what I'm thinking. I have read Love's Dark Fury myself. You have? And for the same reason, relaxation. Although I must say, I found the behavior of the heroine totally inexplicable. Nevertheless, it was very entertaining. Yes, I found the heroine a bit much, too, but what did you think of that hero? Well, he did have something to recommend him. I can write something like that. I know I can. I think it's a splendid idea. You should begin immediately. I will. Good. <laughs> Nancy, there is one other thing. What's that? You are a respected journalist. If I were you, I'd use a pseudonym. Hi, how'd it go? Went great. And so Derek, and he's going to be the best man in the world. You're kidding! I didn't think he'd accept. No. What do you think? I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's looking at my uncle all the time. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Home. Home? You are home. You even told Gunther that this is mm, Be careful. We're not going to be married till tomorrow. Oh. So, I'm not going to give myself to my future husband the evening before the wedding. It just isn't done. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We spent most of the last week upstairs. I, I, I don't care what liberties you enjoyed in the past. I'm going to observe the surprise. I'm going to make a great big sacrifice. I'm going to sleep alone tonight. You're making a sacrifice? <laughs> Thank you, Swinney. You can wait outside. Miss Pond, we've never met, although I've been reading about you. I'm Chief Mallory. My bail's been approved. There's nothing you can do about that. I know, I know. I won't skip, I promise. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Now, I wanted to see you because I need some more information. I told you, Detective, everything I know. What can you tell me about a man calling himself Del Everett? Never heard of him. No? Del Everett. Early 50s. Stocky. Well-dressed. Anybody like that work for Venefra? You arrested Venefra's bodyguard. I picked him out of the lineup. Besides him, Venefra's men are mostly... Oh, lift and carry guys. Everett was in that warehouse when we raided it. Why don't you think a little harder, mister? Look, Chief, I'd like to help you out. I don't know him. Taxi. Any good?
good by moping around like this. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Listen, I gotta get going. I have to get the theater papers together so Gunther and I can get the loan from the bank. Gunther Wagner, entrepreneur, the mind to boggle. Cliff, I need your help. What's wrong? Things are falling apart, everything. I mean, how could Missy leave me in charge when I've only worked here a week? The busboys are fighting. Francesco is threatening to quit. Hey, waitress, <sighs> this food is cold. I'm sorry. I'll be with you in a moment. Listen, it sounds like the rock garden needs professional mediation. It's okay, Mariano. See what I can do. I'm sorry, sir. This is not to our usual customary high standards, but the uh, better get going with the chef. Please bear with us. Man, how did you ever get conned into something like this, wise guy? Last time you were wearing something like this, Dell was doing, man. Damn, the ceremony isn't for an hour yet. Hey, baby, a little early to come getting me, you know what I mean? Hiya, Johnny. Aren't you gonna invite your daddy in?